Welcome to Reverse Engineering News. I'm your host, Hash. Thanks for joining. This week, I've got a doozy for you. It's a treasure map, more like a blueprint, a way to know how to dump the memory of any chip. I watched this 10 minute video and my jaw literally dropped. It's gonna blow your mind. Then I have a tool called BioDiff, which uses DNA sequencing techniques to compare binary files. And apparently Arduino has big bags of cash. But first, Richesum has a Patreon. What is Patreon? It's a way for me to create content for people who love this channel and want to see more in-depth content. Think like a director's cut of what you're watching right now. Each story today will have a longer version over on Patreon. You can go check it out. In-depth information on each story, things that might make it a little too long for your average high-level YouTube video. But if you're into engineering, design, hacking, all these things, or you want to do those things, it's the exact length of video you're going to want to see. Now let's get started with the show. There was a talk that was given. It was called Unlock the Door to My Secrets, But Don't Forget to Glitch. It was a talk that was just given recently at the Chaos Communications Camp. Um, a gentleman named Mark Schink was supposed to present it. It's his um, research, but his colleague Sylvan presented it. It's a short video. It actually starts at about three minutes and 30 seconds in and goes for about 11 or 11 and a half minutes. And in it, I mean, he drops the most massive bomb you've ever seen in a video. And it was the most nonchalant way of dropping it you've ever seen. I mean, I had to like go back and be like, did he just say what I think he said in this video? And so let me, let me just take a step back and tell you. So a few episodes back, I had a Pico Poner episode and I talked about this paper. It was one exploit to rule them all. And I mentioned Johannes Obermeyer. Uh, there was also two other guys I didn't mention on that thing. Mark Schenk was one of them from this research. And Cosma Mokzek, he's also another one, another integral person in that paper. I wanted to mention them now because I didn't before. And, and obviously these guys are doing some top-notch research. Now, apparently... What Mark is trying to tell us, and it seems he's been trying to tell us this for years, because in the, the description, it mentions literally a couple years he's been trying to highlight this. And I saw it in one of the older papers now that I started digging in, is that these debug ports on these microcontrollers, it seems that a lot of them are vulnerable. Like we're talking whole classes of chips inside manufacturers, and it even seems multiple manufacturers. I mean, the paper isn't released yet because of all the, uh, you know, stuff he's having to go through with these manufacturers um, before he can drop it. Now in the video, what he provides is essentially, it's like what I think of as a treasure map. And what I mean by that is he shows that if you take a power analysis of this chip, when you erase it, you can see some things. Now, why would you want to erase it? You want to erase it because if somebody locks out the debug port on the chip and you erase the chip, it gives you debug port access back. Now, it doesn't do you any good for the information that was on it. But what Mark found is that when you erase the chip, it's actually three kind of discrete steps that happen when you watch this power trace. There's an initial erase that's meant to erase all of the memory that's in the chip. Then there's another erase that happens that erases just the configuration bits. And at the very end, it writes the new configuration bits in, which allow you access. What he found is that if you glitch the chip at that first erase, it doesn't actually erase the chip, but it carries on to erase and rewrite the configuration bits, which gives you full access. Now, what's a glitch? A glitch, in this instance, there's numbers of different ways you can do it, but the way he talks about here and the way they demo in the video is just dropping the voltage of the processor, just dropping it long enough that during that time when it's trying to execute those instructions to erase the flash, that part of it fails, but it carries on. And, and so the treasure map part of it is this power analysis, if you do it on any chip, it seems like, from what he's seen, they all seem to have these three kind of discrete steps. Now let's move on to our next story. Okay, a BioDiff comparison tool. This is interesting. I saw it pop up on Twitter um, and I've used diff before. If you're not familiar with diff or the idea of diffing, it's basically you have two files and you wanna see the difference 
between those two files. So maybe you've read out a memory from a chip and then something changed, um, or you have two pieces of malware and you want to compare them to see what's changed between versions or something like that. It's, it's basically a quick way to try to tell what has changed uh, at a byte level between files. Now the thing is, um, if you open up a file, say in uh, I'm hex, I am hex, um, or any other hex editor, and you do a, a diff, what it does is a byte by byte difference. So what's in location one in each file? What's in location 100 in each file? And if those are different, it says, hey, there's a difference. But a lot of times that's not what you wanna see. What you really wanna see is maybe the file is shifted a little bit. Like maybe a piece of code was deleted from the second file and that caused it to shift up a bit, but everything else is the same. This is what BioDiff uh, shows you. It's basically an intelligence diff tool. They use some libraries that are traditionally used for DNA analysis, and they, they actually look and try to reset the file based on the data that's in it. So it's like analyzing the data and then trying to see what happened, what was added, what was removed, and it does a remarkably good job. As you can see in this sample image here, they show you red are bytes that have changed, green are bytes that have been added in a file that wasn't in the other file, and blank space is where things were, were uh, filled in in one file but not in the other. So it does a very good job of just very quickly and easily showing you what happened between these two files. Now on to the Arduino funding round. So Arduino apparently is going from hobby to enterprise. Uh, they were in the hobbyist market for the longest time, um, and they're moving over now to be more on the enterprise market. Apparently last year, they got about $32 million in funding to chase after this enterprise market. Just the other day, they got another $22 million to continue to chase after this market. So a lot of money, $54 million for hobbyist Arduino to go chase these big enterprise commercial markets. They started, according to their Wikipedia page, trying to make a lower cost version of a parallax basic stamp. I had a parallax basic stamp uh, long ago, and that, you know they're right; those things were expensive. I was afraid I was going to burn mine up when I when I was a kid, and I actually did once, and I had to send it back to them, and they fixed it for me. Um, so I can understand why a bunch of college students would want to start a business making a cheaper version of that. Seems they did, and they were they've been very successful. Now, what I would say for Arduino is that fifty four million dollars is a lot of money. And with a lot of money comes a lot of expectations. Uh, so I hope they, they do a good job. They attack this enterprise market and they, they grow their business. And I hope they don't leave the hobbyists behind. Um, and those of us that they, they built the business on. Uh, a lot of times that happens and, you know, it's unfortunate. But that's, uh, that's business. That's the way it goes. Someone else will step in to fill the shoes of Arduino should that be the case. I think there's a rule about social media sites. You tell me if I'm wrong. They need to be two syllables. YouTube, Facebook, Snapchat, WhatsApp, Instagram, Reddit, Twitter. Oh, they renamed it to X. I don't know if it's going to survive. Is there another one syllable social media site? I mean, even in China, they have WeChat. They're even two syllables. I think they might have, they got to name it something like XX. Then maybe they'll rebrand it to two letters. I'm over there on X uh, and maybe XX in the future. You can also find me on Discord, another two syllable one, We're over there chatting about reverse engineering. You can come hang out with us. You should also create an account on the Wiki. Hexpone just created a page. It's on the Amazon Blink Sync Mobile. It's a great page. Shares information about this device that he took apart and a debug port that he found. That's what it's all about getting information, taking pictures, sharing, documenting. Other people can come in if they're working on something. Create a page, share something you're working on. Thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you next week.